Hey, quite a chariot, huh? Oh, that Bell Parnell travels in class, doesn't he? It's yeah. nice of him to send the car for us. Well, why shouldn't he send the car for me? I'm doing him a big favor. I'm letting Danny play the Palladium for him. He'll make a million dollars. Well, I wish I had your confidence. What's the matter with you? I'm scared. Scared? What yeah. do you got to be scared about? What have I got to be scared about? Plenty. Oh, don't pay any attention to him, Phil. He was scared the last time he played here, and they all loved him. Honey, the last time I played here, my act was mostly songs. This time, it's mostly comedy. So? So? You don't know about the famous British sense of humor? Oh, come on. Don't tell me you believe that jazz about the British not having a sense of humor. Sure, you don't have to believe it. You'll be sitting in the box. All you got to worry about is your 10%. Me, I got to be on the stage worrying about getting laughs. Oh, I'm sure that's all nonsense. The, the British sense of humor is as good as ours. Hear, hear. Hear, hear. <laughs> well, I'll prove it to both of you. Is the show for British? Yeah. Listen. Oh, say, uh, Sam. Yes, sir. That's, uh... Quite a car you got there. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good and long. Yes. Of course, in the States, we have them much longer. I suppose so, sir, yes. You don't have to suppose, I'm telling you. Matter of fact, I've got a car that's so long that in the front I've got New York license plates, in the back I've got Connecticut plates. <laughs> it must be very difficult to park a car as long as that, <laughs> sir. <laughs> so what does that prove? I got to get a new act. Come on. I still say you're worrying about nothing. So do I. One choker doesn't laugh at his jokes, and the entire British Empire has no sense of humor. Yeah. You two still need convincing, huh? Well, I'll show you. How are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of traffic coming in from the airport today. Usually is at this time, sir. Uh, of course, you don't have nearly as much traffic in London as we have in New York. We haven't, sir? Oh, no. You know, in New York, there's a man knocked down by a car every five minutes. Really, sir? Yeah, and he's getting sick and tired of it. <laughs> yeah. I should imagine so, sir. <laughs> Thanks, you, you've proven my point. I have, sir? Yeah, see, you didn't laugh. That's a joke. Quite funny, sir. Oh, don't get too hysterical. As you wish, sir. <laughs> Shall I get them to carry your luggage in, sir? Yeah, you better hurry before they have to carry me in. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we are, sir. Oh. I'm sure you and Mrs. Williams will find it quite comfortable here, sir. It's one of our best suites. It's lovely. Yeah, well, nothing is too good for America's number one comedian. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, that's Danny Williams. He's opening at the Palladium. Oh, yes, sir, I know. I was rather lucky. I was able to get seats for the opening night. Oh. You like comedy? Oh, rather, sir. I'm very fond of comedy. Yeah, you see. Oh, well. Now, I hope you got a nice pad like this for me, too. Oh, yes, indeed, sir. I can give you a lovely room and bath. Uh -huh. Well, why don't you just give him the room and let him take the bath himself? <laughs> oh, naturally. Yeah. We're very considerate of our guests' privacy. <laughs> yes, Mr. Brocker, if you'd like to come this way. Yes, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where do you think you're going? I'll check with you later. What's with you? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You talk about the rat deserting the sinking ship. Danny, you're not a sinking ship. OK. I'm half wrong. <laughs> I take it you are calling me a rat? You booked me into the Palladium, didn't you? Why don't you get off that kick? There is nothing wrong with the British sense of humor. And there's something wrong with your hearing. Haven't you been listening? I couldn't get a laugh all day. I tried a joke on a chauffeur, a bomb. Tried one on a doorman, a bigger bomb. And now that assistant manager. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's got tickets to my opening yet. Daddy, why don't you talk to your husband? He's bullheaded. I can't get anywheres with him. Oh, Danny, simmer down. You're just jumping to conclusions. Right. The English aren't laughing at your jokes because they take their jobs seriously. That's right. They're very sedate. Sure. And they don't respond to frivolity when they're working. Yeah, but you put them in a theater, they'll laugh their heads off. Of 
course. It's just a silly rumor about the British not having a sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought till today. I'm telling you, I am in large trouble. I've got to change my act. How are they going to laugh at me? They don't even understand my language. Oh, were you thinking of doing the act in Lebanese? <laughs> oh, you're such a wit. Why don't you book yourself into the Palladium? <laughs> well, I'm asking for help, and he keeps hitting me with wisecracks. All right. Got an idea. You're going to cancel the engagement? No. But if you feel so insecure about your act, why don't you check it out with Sir Harry Barclay? I've got his phone number right here. Her Harry Barclay? Say, that's a wonderful idea. If anybody could tell you about the British sense of humor, it's Harry Barclay. That's right. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't ask him. Oh, Danny, he, he'd do anything to help you. He adores you. I know, sweetheart, but I don't want to impose on our friendship. Well, honey, you're being silly. I mean, besides, he owes you a favor. Hmm? When he was playing in New York, didn't you get him an honorary membership in the Friars Club? Well, That's yeah. right. Didn't you emcee that testimonial dinner for him? Oh, yeah. Well, call him. Sure, if anybody can tell you whether your act is all right for the Palladium, it's Harry. Come on, darling, call him. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it seems silly. I mean, he the first day in the guy's country, and right away I'm asking him to do me a favor. Forget it. Huh? I withdraw the suggestion. We've been forgetting something, Danny. You're not a green boy just starting out in show business. You're Danny Williams. Now, we've been together a long time. I haven't asked for many favors. I'm going to ask for one now. I want you to take your act just as it is and step out on that Palladium stage with your head high and your chest out and leave those people for dead with no help from Harry Barkley or anybody else. Now, would you do that for me, Danny? You got a deal, pal. Good boy. Oh, yes? Excuse me, uh, sir. Do you have anything you'd like to be laundered? Oh, yes. I've got some shirts. I'll give them to you later. And what about your wife? Well, uh, okay, but don't use too much starch on her. I watch it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call Harry Barkley. <laughs> oh, yeah, I must say that was a wonderful lunch. Well, I thought you'd like it. That's why I invited you to meet me here. Our club has the best chef in London. It certainly proved it to me. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. You know, the more I think about it, the more disturbed I am that you should think that the British have no sense of humor. Harry, I I've got the scars to prove it. Like I told you, today I, I did everything but take a pie in the face trying to get your people to smile, and nothing. Yeah, but you can't draw conclusions about a whole nation from a few people. Well, if you want my opinion, I think you'd make a mistake to change your act. I saw it in America, and loved it. I'm British. Yeah, you're British, but you're different. You're show people like I am. I mean, you've traveled all over the world. Your, your sense of humor is sort of international. But for the rest of your people... Eh. Are you aware that that eh, is a reflection on my countrymen? Harry, I love your countrymen. I'm merely reflecting on their sense of humor. So I can't convince you that you'll be safe to trust the British sense of humor when you open next week. How can I trust it? I can't even find it. <laughs> all right. Well, in that case, suppose we get together before your opening, we'll go through your whole act, and I'll try to give you an objective opinion of what a British audience reaction will be. Harry, if you'll do that for me, I'll be indebted to you for life. Well, I'm delighted to do it. Thank you. And if there's any other way in which I can, you know, help you? Well, yes, uh, th this club. I mean, it's, it's like uh, our friars or, or the maskers. I mean, it's a theatrical club, isn't it? Well, yes, in a way, but, but there is a difference. I mean, there's a whole, whole world of tradition behind it. It's over 200 years old. Yeah. Well, I, I was hoping maybe you'd put me up for temporary membership while I'm in town. I have some place to come to lunch, play some billiards, play cards mm -hmm. with the boys. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Danny, I, I, I don't know how to say this. You, you don't know how to say what? Well. The Stratford is really most frightfully exclusive. So? Well, what I mean is... <laughs> you know, I admire you very, very much, Danny. I think you're a very talented man. <laughs> but, uh, Well, this club has other standards. <laughs> you 
trying to tell me that, that I'm not fit for a temporary membership in your club? Oh, not at all. It's, it's just that once a club starts letting down the bars, it... Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I... I know what you mean. Oh, and now I've offended you. And that's the last thing in the world I wanted to do. I tell you what. I'll arrange a meeting for you with the membership committee tomorrow, and we'll hope for the best. <laughs> if only you had a title or something. <laughs> title? Well, the social status of a candidate is very important to the club. Oh, come on, Harry. Did we consider any social status when I put you up for membership in a friars club? Well, of course not. Well, certainly not. <laughs> well, if you had, I'd have been your only member. <laughs> Membership committee. Ah, up the stairs, sir. First on now. Oh, thank you. Barclay, uh, arrange an interview for me? Oh, yes, quite. Yours, Harry, is American chap. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> I am Sir Howard Bakersmith. This is Sir Nigel Spencer. Oh, dear. Mr. Eric Fortescue, OBE. How do you do? <laughs> we are interested in learning a little about your background. I propose to begin by investigating your genealogy. Absolutely essential, I should say. Excellent <laughs> idea. Mm, capital suggestion. The first question is, who are you? Well, I just told you, I'm, 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 I'm Danny Williams. No, I mean in a genealogical sense. Your family tree. Family tree? Yes. Now, let's go back a little. I don't mean too far back. Uh, Ten or fifteen generations will suffice. Yes, after all, it is only for a temporary membership. Yes, I suppose we can afford to relax our standards for a bit. <laughs> How far does your family go back? Well, uh... How far can you trace it back, then? Well, I, I, I never kept any records or anything. I trace it as far back as Lebanon, I guess. Oh. I'm Lebanese, I mean. Lebanese? Uh, Lebanese? <laughs> he say Lebanese. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> he said it. Quite definitely, he said. <laughs> on both sides. Yeah, and, and all over, too. I <laughs> to wonder what Sir Harry could have been thinking about proposing this fellow for membership. I... I'm beginning to wonder who proposed Sir Harry. <laughs> yes, by the way, who did propose Sir Harry? <laughs> I don't know offhand. I shall certainly look into it. Mm. Yes, well, let's move away from your genealogical background. We can better. Uh, by the way, uh, what is your background, Mr. William? I mean, with uh, what company were you first associated? First, uh, well, the Toledo Gas Company. <laughs> I was referring to the theatrical company with which you first served your apprenticeship. I mean, uh, some Shakespearean company, like uh, Old Vic or Stratford Players. Well, no, I, I never did any Shakespeare. You never did Shakespeare? No, sir. Never? Never. You never did Shakespeare? <laughs> never. Never. Oh, dear. What could Sir Harry have been thinking of? <laughs> Are you sure you can't remember who proposed Sir Harry? <laughs> I shall definitely find out. So, you never did Shakespeare? No, sir. Ibsen, perhaps? Nope. Strindberg, then? Who's Strindberg? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did you play, sir? Oh, I played the Chez Paris and the Sands and the Copa. 
All of the big nightclubs. Did he say nightclub? I'm afraid so. <laughs> we must find out who proposed Sir Harry. <laughs> Let's also find out who proposed the chap who proposed Sir Harry. You're <laughs> <laughs> No, no, definitely no. Mr. Williams, we are calling a special meeting this afternoon to discuss your application with our membership. You will kindly come back here at five o'clock. Until then, good day. Uh, I... Good day, Mr. Williams. of law and justice. Yeah, a lot they know about justice around here. The snobs judging a man because of his background. Oh, I had to open my big mouth. You know what I should have said? No, what should you have should have said? I, I should have said, I should have said, you guys think you got an exclusive club? Uh, my old neighborhood in Toledo, we had the exclusive club, I should have said. I should have said, we were so exclusive you couldn't even apply for membership unless you had four teeth missing. That's what I should have said. <laughs> House of Parliament is officially known as the Palace of Westminster and is technically regarded as a palace, though no monarch has lived in it since the time of Henry VIII. Just think. Henry VIII lives there. You know, it burns me up the more I think of it. Amazing. I really should have shocked them out of their monocles. That's what I should have said. I, I should have said, I should have said, I'll tell you something about background. In my old neighborhood, the building inspector didn't know whether to condemn the houses or the people. How do you like that for background? I should have said. Hmm. Now I think of it. <laughs> The changing of the guard. Yeah, it's impressive. Changing of the guard. I could suggest a few changes for this place. <laughs> Stratford Club, a bunch of stuffed shirts. Tell us about your family tree, he says. I should have said, I should have said, we were too poor to have a family tree, I should have said. All we could afford was a family bush, I should have said. <laughs> Stop muttering. Enjoy the afternoon. Enjoy the sight. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. <laughs> well, I should have really shocked them. I should have said, family tree? We couldn't even afford a dog, I should have said. I should have said, my mother felt so sorry for me, she let me house break my baby brother. I should have said. That unless we, well, as a people, make up our minds, here and now, to push forward, yeah. we shall almost certainly right. move back. Oh, the no, 20th century yeah. is marching toward the yeah. 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 This area of Tower Hill is known as Speaker's Corner. Here, anyone with a grievance can get a public hearing. Anyone with a political or religious theory can expound it to an audience. The speaker merely starts his oration, and soon, if he's sufficiently eloquent, he will have assembled a large audience. I just get madder and madder the more I think about it. It just burns me up, those snobs. I mean, judging a man because of his background. That family tree jazz. Well, that really killed me. They'd have probably said to Christopher Columbus, sorry, old boy, we can't recognize that new world you discovered. After all, you're nothing but a lowly tailor. <laughs> oh, 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 that's a nice love you invented, Mr. Edison. Well, we can't accept it. After all, you're nothing but a newsboy. <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Lincoln, you're not thinking of running for president, are you? I mean, after all, you're nothing but a rail splitter. <laughs> oh, those snobs, those snobs. I mean, this is the 20th century. You judge a man for what he is and what he can do, not by what tree he comes from or what school tie he wears. Oh, tradition is a good thing. Well, when it means preserving the, the, the good of the past, but it's a bad thing when it means closing your eyes to the present. And that's exactly what I'm going to tell those snobs this afternoon at 5 o'clock. You can bet me.
as chairman of the board of directors of the Stratford Club, I think you... I beg your pardon. Danny, you ought to be there. Well, Harry, I think I'm a little bit late. What I'm about to say, I should have said earlier today, when I was being cross-examined by the unholy three here, all about my genealogy. I, to my dying day, I'll never know why I took their snobby slurs so meekly. I, I guess I was stunned. Stunned by an arrogance and pomposity that I didn't believe existed in our profession. I asked for membership in this club because I sought the companionship of my fellow actors. Democratic people with whom I could share the love of our profession and the love for talent. But I'm afraid I can't share anything with you people. Not a thing. Because the only things you love and respect are, are covered with the dusty cobwebs of the past. Uh, Danny, please. Harry, I'm sorry. But I withdraw my request for membership in this club, temporary or otherwise. I don't want anything to do with it. Good day, my lords. Danny, one second. Please. If you requested a temporary membership of the Stratford Club, I have to inform you that the committee has refused that request. You stopped me just to tell me that. I did. But instead, they've asked me to uh, present you with this. Go on, read it. <laughs> Please, please, please. Go on, Danny. Read it out loud. The Stratford Club is honored to welcome Danny Williams, American brother, as an honorary life member for now and forever. It's engraved. When did you have this made? Yesterday, after you talked to me. <laughs> What you make me go through all this for? Well, it was the only way I could uh, stop you from changing your whole act. Huh? Well, you insisted that the British had no sense of humor. I had to prove to you that we have. <laughs> <laughs> you mind pulling the other leg, Governor? I'm getting a bit lopsided. <laughs> and the success of this stupendous evening was largely due to the brilliance may we say genius, of our visiting American star, Mr. Danny Williams. They always said you make a first-class member. <laughs> <laughs> Aha! Here comes the conquering hero oh, himself. Well, well, Congratulations, well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and a jolly good entertainer, too. I've never, I've never seen such an opening. Brought the house down. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, Danny, would you like to say a few words? Yes, I, I think I'd better. <laughs> I, uh, well, I, I can only say uh, what I've said before. I, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself for, for misjudging you. No, no, no. no. And by, by way of apology, I'd like to propose a toast. A toast? A toast to the great British sense of humor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And now, to prove that we accept your apology in the spirit in which it was given, may we propose a toast to you. Gentlemen, to Danny Williams. Hip, hip. Hey. Hey.